a DC generator and electric motor has exactly the same compound. A motor is identical to a DC generator because both of them have the same components. What are they? Permanent magnets. You see that first component, permanent magnets. Second component, conducting loops. Conducting loops. Third component, commutator. Yes, you see that? Simple celebrant. Commutator, two segments. And brushes, fourth component, brushes. One brush is in here, other brush right there. A motor can be used as a DC generator if you want. A DC generator can be used as a motor if you want. It's up. But their definitions are different because generator converts mechanical energy to electrical energy. However, motor does opposite. Motor converts electrical energy to mechanical energy. You are going to plug the motor to the electricity, you will switch it on, and it will start rotating. And rotating about mechanical energy. So it gets electrical energy. In your house, Everything which is rotated by electricity, electricity is motor. For example, mixer. Mixer, you have muscle, you have it. So you push a button, so because it's black to the electricity, it gets electricity, electrical energy, and it starts rotating, yeah, rotational kinetic energy, which is mechanical energy. Or hair dryer. You plug it into electricity, and you push a button, it starts blowing. So it converts again electrical energy to mechanical, or washing machine. You plug it to electricity, you switch on, it starts rotating. It is a motor. Then everything in your house which is rotating is electric motor. All are DC motors. All are motors. So, as you see, structures are exactly the same. A motor converts electrical energy to mechanical energy. Its definition, every definition is a mystery exam question. Most probably this is a mystery exam question as well. But to rotate the motor, you need electrical and electric energy source. So, an external EMF source, a button, supplies electrical current to the loops of the motor. You see that? This is a DC power source supply. Yeah, the battery. A battery is a positive terminal and a negative terminal. So, this is the positive terminal of the battery. This is the negative terminal of the battery. And electric current starts from positive terminal, follows the loop, and comes to negative terminal. Let's follow the electric current from positive, go through the wire, enters to the brush, from brush to left segment, from this segment to the left end of the loop, follow the loop, and then come to the other segment, and from brush we come to the negative end. So, an electric current is provided to the loop. If electric current is given a loop, loop produces its own magnetic field. Magnet has its own magnetic field. Loop produces its own magnetic field. There are two magnetic fields. If there are two magnetic fields, of course there will be a magnetic force. And this magnetic force will provide Rotation of the coil inside the fixed ma magnetic field. Ah, magnet's magnetic field is fixed. Magnet does not rotate. It's uh, screwed on the body of the motor. Ah, if magnet's magnetic field is not rotating, oops, one of the magnetic field must rotate. Which one will rotate? Of course, the loop's magnetic field will rotate. So, an external EMF source of battery supplies electric current to the loops of the motor, and of course, every current in the loop will have its own magnetic field. The current produces a magnetic field in the loop, which is perpendicular to the plane of the loop. And permanent magnet has its own magnetic field. There are two magnetic fields. The fixed magnetic field of the permanent magnet, which is from N to S, and repels the magnetic field of the current loop, and loop starts rotating. In chapter 5, section 2, there was a question. At what orientation of a current loop inside an electric magnetic field? Loop will not tend to rotate. Remember? Okay. Is it possible to orient the current carrying loop of wire in a uniform magnetic field so that the loop will not tend to rotate?
So we explain that. First, I explain it as a compass example. Compass will tend to rotate in here because magnetic field of the compass and magnetic field of the external magnet are perpendicular, they cross each other, and magnetic fields never want to cross one another. So it will rotate until both magnetic field becomes in the same direction. And also in here, we have a current law, which carries a current counterclockwise. If electric current is counterclockwise, magnetic field of the loop is out of the page. So in here we have a out of the page magnetic field. Out of the page magnetic field. Uh, so this magnetic field is perpendicular to the left loop's magnetic field. If two magnetic fields are perpendicular, the loop will start rotating until both magnetic field becomes in the same direction. So when the external magnetic field is in the same direction of the uh, loop's magnetic field in the same direction of the external magnetic field, it will not tend to rotate. But right now, loop is perpendicular to this external magnetic field. Yeah. In fact, this is a motor. Because we make this loop rotate. So in electric motor, loop is rotating. In here, from home, parallel to perpendicular, it also rotates. Of course, it's the principle of motor. So you, you know, in motor, you should be able to make a loop rotating. So now I will continue by this title. Now we have two magnetic fields, as you see. In the first one, external magnetic field is provided by a mag magnet with, from N pole to the S pole. And of course, you will give electric current to a loop. Battery. battery is needed for this. So let me say I attach this a battery. So positive terminal and negative terminal of the battery will be attached to them. Electric current starts from positive to negative. Now loop, loop is parallel to magnetic field lines. When loop is parallel to magnetic field lines, its magnetic field will be vertical. These blue lines are representing loop's magnetic field. Red lines are representing fixed magnetic field, uh, so they are not, they are crossing each other, they don't want to cross. What will happen? This loop will start rotating until it becomes perpendicular. Yani, when it takes this position, it will stop rotating. So, any orientation different than that, loop will start rotating. When it becomes perpendicular, both magnetic field becomes in the same direction, so it will stop rotating. But we should find a way to provide continuous rotation. So how can we provide continuous rotation? Because it will stop in here. By changing magnetic fields. If magnetic fields become again opposite, they will continuously push another. But to change magnetic field direction of the loop, we have to change electric field direction in the loop. A device, a component of the motor will do that. Which component? Yeah. Commutator. Commutator. Again, remember there were four components. Commutator changes electric current direction when loop takes this position, changes electric current direction. When electric current direction changes, magnetic field of the loop becomes to the left. So two magnetic fields are opposite in direction. This fixed magnetic field continues repelling the loop's magnetic field down loop. Rotates. Okay, then in here we have to know two things. One of them is what component of the motor provides continuous rotation? Commutator is the answer. We have to know this. Second, how does commutator do that? By changing electric current direction the loop. Or your books were alternates. By alternating, yani changing direction of the electric current in the loop, and it provides continuous rotation. Okay, and uh, about this I'm going to show you a movie and you will see how a uh, commutator changes electric current direction in the wall. Both of them. When electric current direction is changed, magnetic field direction in the wall also changes. So the aim is to change the magnetic field direction. I mean, uh, aim is this, but to do that, we should change electric current direction. Uh, to because we should use a commutator. The, the 
direction of magnetic fields the same as the... Yes, if they are in the same direction, they don't repel each other. We should make them opposite. Okay, so now the movie is about how a motor works. The stator provides a constant magnetic field, and the armature, which is the rotating part, is a simple coil. The armature... So as you see, there are four components. One component, as you see, the magnet, fixed magnetic fields. Second component is a loop. You see this loop? Each end of them is attached to a commutator. Commutator splits the brick, remember? Two segments. And on the right, there's one brush. On the left, there's another brush. Of course, we should attach this motor to a battery to start rotation. Motor is connected to a DC power source through a pair of commutator rings. Now, according to this drawing, you can understand that electric current starts from positive, <coughs> goes through the wire, goes to the left brush, from the left segment of the commutator to the coil, from the coil comes to the other side, from right segment of the commutator, from right brush, and to the negative. So this is what, how electric current moves through the coil. When the current flows through the coil, an electromagnetic force. Yeah, so these blue lines are representing electric current attraction. Now, on the left segment, it is into. On the right segment, it is out. And according to that, you can find the magnetic field direction. It is down to the page. Still perpendicular to fixed magnetic field. So, this is not the position a loop can stay uh, at rest. It will start rotating. This is induced on it according to the Lorentz law. So, the coil will start to rotate. Until you will notice that as the coil rotates, the commutator rings connect with the power. Until it becomes perpendicular. When it becomes per perpendicular, the commutator must change electric current direction. Now, electric current direction is out. At this position, commutator will change this current direction. Look at this blue arrow. How direction of the blue arrow, arrow yeah, the electric current direction changes by the commutator at this vertical position. Our source of opposite polarity. You saw that? As a result, on the left side of the coil, the electricity now, will always now, flow away. In. And on the right side, At electricity will always flow towards. This ensures that the torque action is also in the same direction throughout the motion, so the coil will continue rotating. But, if you observe the torque action on the coil closely, you will notice that when the coil is nearly perpendicular to the magnetic flux, of the course, right here, uh, this loop will not be repelled by the magnet so strongly, even almost zero. But when it's parallel, this magnetic field repel the loop with a greater torque, greater force. That's why when it's horizontal, loop will rotate a little faster. When it gets vertical position, it will slow down. And it's going to be an irregular motion. Now observe it. Torque action near zero. As a result, there will be irregular motion of the rotor if you run such a DC motor. Now faster, slower, faster, slower, faster, slower. When it's parallel, it's slower. No, when it's parallel, when parallel, so maximum torque acts on it because they are perpendicular, the magnetic fields are perpendicular, fixed magnetic field pushes the perpendicular magnetic field of the loop. But when it becomes perpendicular, the magnetic field becomes in the same direction, they don't push each other so strong. That's why when it's horizontal, Rotation is quicker when it becomes vertical, slower rotation. It's an irregular rotation, not regular. See that? Here is the trick to overcoming this problem. How can we solve this problem? What do you think? How can we solve? What do you think? Another coil. Another coil. Correct? We are going to use a second coil for that. Add one more loop to the rotor with a separate commutator pair for it. In this arrangement, when the first loop is in the vertical position, the second loop will be connected to the power source. So a motive force is always so present in the system. Torque. Now this has a greater torque. Now this is a greater torque. So the one which is horizontal has the maximum torque. And Moreover, the more such loops, the smoother will be the motor rotation. Not only single, not only two. In a practical motor, the armature loops are fitted inside slots of highly permeable steel layers. This will enhance magnetic flux interaction. 
Spring-loaded commutator brushes help to maintain contact with the power source. Okay, so as you see, not only two coils, several coils exist, and then this is what the structure of a real motor is. Okay?